Um, and your damage was, was that mainly in the garden? Yeah, it was the border wall that mm. collapsed and I made a claim. Yeah. Uh, there was no fuss at all whatsoever. They sent their... The only thing that troubled me was different companies. They appoint different companies. Once you, you inform them about mm. the claim, they get away and then they put this builders and that builders and so all the strangers started coming, mm -hmm. knocking on my door and getting the estimates and what not. Well, I, had, I actually had no water. They had to turn it off from the mains. For how long? On and off for two weeks. Yeah. And they did say, we're going to put you up somewhere, mm -hmm. but they yeah. didn't. Mm -hmm. Um, but did you push that, or I, you know, I couldn't be to have two small kids. It, mm. That was even more of a nightmare. Um, so they would sometimes, some days, be able to turn it on at mm -hmm. night time. So you know, all the bar, um, bathing, whatever. Mm. Um, but what I did get out of them was food, oh, right. um, like um, dry rations, coupon <laughs> things, oh, right. things, yes. Yeah. Because I had no kitchen. No, I had nothing. No. Um, and as I said to the loss adjuster, maybe it works better if you're a woman, I guess. But I did say to him, I've got two kids, yeah. what do I do? And he went, all right, I'll give you money. <laughs> so, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> it was great. What about Lou's though? Presumably, could, could you flush Lou's? No. Mm. I went out a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm lucky I have a lot of good neighbours. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. And were there parts of the house that couldn't be occupied, even though you were sort of camping in your house? I had uh, no kitchen, no lounge. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And everything from the kitchen and the lounge was in my dining room. Right. So that was a whole downstairs gone. So I had the playroom. Yeah. That was it. Gosh. Yeah. What about you, Penny? Did you...? Well, uh, the smell of it, it left a smell there for, for time, so oh. I had to stay at my mum's anyway. Oh, right. Um, but then, and also because of our safety, the front door, we were scared to, to be, to stay there and also the door was, was hanging off. Yeah. I had, they had to send him the emergency home service out to, oh um, home, emergency home response yeah, to come, safe. to make it a bit safe and all my, my, um, camera got ruined as well. So then they paid him out quite quick for the cameras. So we mm. had loads of them installed, but then when they were starting the work at the beginning, um, I mean, we had no toilet upstairs because the pipe outside was destroyed. Gosh. So we had just the toilet downstairs. Yeah. So it was a bit of a worry for my daughter when she'd get, because she's only 12, well, at that time she was 11. Yeah. And she'd have to get up and go downstairs to the toilet, and in the night she'd be petrified. So I had all of that to mm -hmm. deal with, and she, just, she was with me constantly. Yeah, so and then when the work was being done, um, we'd either just stay out for the day or. Lots of things were kind of barricaded into the kitchen, so we couldn't really use the kitchen while they were doing one room. So it was a headache, it was awful, it was a nightmare actually. Oh, no. We managed to get through it. No, it was horrible. It happened <coughs> at night, oh, um, and they said 24 hour service. Not so. Nobody was at the end of the phone. It was horrible. When you can see water coming in, yeah. it's pouring the rain outside, and you can't do anything to stop it. it. It's frightening. You just want to speak to a human who can supposedly sort it out for you. Mine were brilliant. Right. Oh, I was so happy with them. I mean, right. um, I contacted them. What happened with my house was early hours of the morning, so I didn't contact them till. Uh, late afternoon the following day um, but they were very good they referred to different obviously it's referred to different departments mm. but they gave me a reference number I had them call me immediately to arrange mm. for them to come round to take details from me it was quite they were very good actually very very good I was very happy with them Okay, Alan. Uh, well, I, I, I mean I didn't have any hassle once the claim was going through I had a hassle till I got to NHBC in the sense that I had a home serve contract at the time. Right. Um, 
who, when you ring them up and tell them the problem, they don't cover flus. Right. I had another, um, um, like, insurance through one of my bank accounts, and mm -hmm. it was exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, the um, insurance company, because I don't need buildings insurance because I'm in the flat, so oh. the, the insurance company for the block of flats right. weren't interested in no. my claim at all. And that's when I um, contacted an HBC. I, I found it on the website. I'm sure, I think these, because it's about a year ago now, I, I'm sure I found it on the website and found to my astonishment that they actually covered flues as well as the basic structure of the building. You didn't yeah. have a build mark warranty document? Well, in the flat which, yeah, I was thinking about that when you mentioned that before, and I am, um, say, 60, 70% certain that I haven't got that. Did you buy that flat from you? Yes. Uh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. And Jerome bought his as well? Well, I bought a brand new, but, but the NHBC certificate was originally in the name of the, the builder. developer builder. Right. Uh, but what he had, and I don't know, and I certainly never got any proper documents. See, our builder went bust. Oh, right. And it was taken over by the developer. Right. The developer is a very, very difficult company to deal with indeed. Right. Um, and I don't think I have got one of those. I'll go home and look now. <laughs>
But had you read it before you had to make a claim? No. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd read the bullet points, but you don't read anything. Yes. You can't yeah. read it all. And did you read it once you've made your claim? Oh, yeah. When oh, they I point think... it out to me, especially yeah. about the damp, and this is oh. not covered, and you, oh, I was like, oh, God, why didn't yeah. say that? And you know, they were right. <laughs> yeah. I just don't trust big companies, so I read it before I rang up. Right. Because I knew there'd be trouble. Boy, was I right. <laughs> I mean, I suppose I just—it's not very British, but I kind of want to see it through. I mean, I work in, well, vaguely in the legal profession. I kind of represent the disabled at tribunals, and I'm very keen to fight the case law for exact wording and get their benefits back. Which, you know, and actually, that's why I have that process. I would complain yes. to get what I'm entitled to, because you know the big corporate shareholders in London are going to get everything, so I'm, I'm entitled. So I'll see it through to the end. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to because I just went into London and sat there. So they, they came out and said, "What would it take for you to go away?" <laughs> And, and so, that, that, so you know, we never got to fruition, I just withdrew the complaint because they, right. they, okay. they, paid, they paid more. Yes. Can I say something about NHBC? I'd always imagined it was, I didn't know it was an insurance company, I thought it was some government quango that just like covered it and sent people out. There was a problem I hadn't realised because the word national doesn't seem to be an insurance company, I didn't realise that at all. Well, if it's national, it means it covers the whole country. Yeah, I just assumed it was some kind and of government appointed thing. I didn't realise it was a private insurance company. Yeah, but this is the point. Right. Given that, that they would always be dealing with either brand new properties or quite new properties, yes. um, you know, my commentary, because I had this experience, is I, is I think they, they need to help purchasers, because uh, it will always be about purchasers at that point, because they're taking over the, the, um, the warranty. Uh, you know, as part of the, the legal process, they should have some very clear bundle that that, that is transferred. Well, it exists. The owner <laughs> well, it may exist, but it's not. It's not a very clear <laughs> process because I, I never received. I, I think I, I think I got a photocopy of, of, of some you know formal mm-hmm. paper that had a number on that I was assured by my lawyers that that would provide the backup mm-hmm. should there be a problem when to come to NHBC. Uh, and I took comfort in, in that comment from the lawyer. You, you should get a nice colour brochure, A4. <laughs> okay, so what I'm saying is that I think NHBC, in this conversation, should make sure that all of those standards and procedures are very clear and are publicised so the public know that's what to expect when purchasing a new property. Your solicitor should have given it to you. Well, maybe, but I didn't know. No, no, I mean, no. I didn't no, know. no so so right, if yes. we all understood what, that, oh. what to Press expect, then yes. we would demand it. So, no idea. Certainly I never got an A4 mm. colour brochure that I right, know. Right. Um, How often do you buy a brand new house? Mm. 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 M